many of you would be aware that last week during the plenary council, there was a juncture, a point in which great distress and anguish was expressed when there was a failure to have a deliberative affirmation of a statement concerning women and church. That was a significant turning point in the life of the Plenary Council last week. In that moment of tension and of suffering, there then became a fruitful moment of grace with, in the sense of how the Plenary Council would operate for the remainder of its time together in that assembly. A freeing up of listening to one another of freeing up of the opportunity to express one's viewpoint. So in that moment of great difficulty, uh, grace was able to emerge. One of the precious gifts of the assembly last week, that in the 300 or so people gathered together in that assembly, was a reflection of the richness of the diversity of the church in Australia. Diversity in terms of age, from the 20s up to the 80s. Diversity of gender, diversity of particular role in the life of the Christian community, diversity of culture, and the richness of the presence of First Nations Australian Catholics and diversity of theology and spirituality. So in that great diversity and enrichment for each of the members of the assembly, but they were not there for themselves. They were there for the whole Australian church and hopefully that enrichment can take place. Eight important statements were released. One to do with reconciliation within the Australian community in the context of our First Nations people. A statement on healing, particularly in the context of great harm that has been done because of the actions of people within the Christian community in terms of abuse. A third statement, affirming that call to mission of each one of us and for us to be enthusiastic about sharing what we believe. The fourth statement, which was able to emerge on the last day of affirmation of equality of women and men and some particular ways forward that that can take place. The fifth statement on the importance of the liturgical and prayer life of the Christian community and the church as a sacrament of Christ in the world in which we live. A sixth statement on the importance of formation for all of us involved in the life of discipleship. A seventh statement on the importance of a governance structure that reflects the needs of the people of God and is transparent in the eyes in the society in which we live. And an eighth statement which affirmed the beauty and the value of our common home, the gift of creation that God has given us and our responsibilities. At some stage, once the fruit of the Plenary Council's Assembly is approved by Pope Francis, then will become the period of implementation, which hopefully will have an effect on the life of our Christian community at the local level, at the national level.